Yo, what's up everyone? How's it going? This is Raymond Jeffries. Thanks for checking out my midweek video. Um, in this video, what I like to do is like to go over my past week of trading, kind of give you an update on where I'm at and show you what's on the radar. In this particular episode, what I want to do is I also want to show you how I go about determining the quality of a particular setup and how I go about grading it and kind of showing my view set and on what I think is a better setup compared to a one that's not as quality. Um, so first, I, what I, how I go out doing my analysis, I do a top-down analysis, and I kind of break down the charts that way. So firstly, we're going to start off here on the Pound Aussie. Um, looking here at the daily, you can see that recently price has been in a, a clear downtrend, but we have since been basically channeling between these two levels at 118.22s to about the lows of 176s, 90, 90. So use a pretty big range. When we go down to the four hour, you'll get a clear view of what I'm talking about. You'll see that consolidation. You can see that we had this nice move down and we've been consolidating between here. In between that bigger consolidation zone, we had this smaller consolidation zone right here. What I like to do on charts, I like to map out my levels of structure. So I kind of, when, when, this is a recommended recommendation I would do for all traders, especially if you're new. Um, only because it gives you a clear representation of what's going on on the charts, where your levels of structure are at. I mean, I guess that's if you're a structured trader. If you're not, then, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so you can clearly see here, price has been channeling between these two points, which gave you good opportunities, kind of traded back and forth. But we have recently broke below this level of structure. Um, I know th to a lot of people, they would like, they would say, hey, you know, we broke structure. I can trade this to the downside. And yes, you know, th that is a setup you can take. Me in particular, how I go about determining a quality setup or what is a good setup between a better setup is I, you, you have to put more into it than just, okay, I'm breaking structure because you have to look left. And if you see where, where we broke structure, we broke down, um, like I said, we broke this level of structure looking left, but what do we have at this level right here where price stopped and reversed? We have a level of structure right here. You can see that price tested in the past. If you go a little further back, you can see we had another level of structure right there where it was tested. This little zone right here where price consolidated at on either side. And I'm sure if you go further back, you can see right there was another time price was testing that. So yes, if you were to take this as a trend continuation trade, it is a quality setup because we did break structure and it is a, you know, if it's part of your plan, it's part of your plan. But well, the way I look at it is if we were to break structure even, if we were able to break this level of structure, let me show you an example. So this right here, if you were a pullback trader, this is a quality setup. It is. I mean, it's, it's a setup. If it's part of your plan, it's part of your plan. But for me personally, a better quality setup, one that I would feel more comfortable in and, and looking at and being like, okay, well, this one seems more quality is if we actually broke this level of structure right here. Yes, that would mean I would possibly miss out on this move. That's completely, you know, that that's likely to happen. But what could also happen is price hit this level of structure, reverse, and come back to the to the highs. So it, it really, like I said, it really determines on how you trade structure and what you what is important to you in your trade plan. But for me, because I value structure, I would feel more comfortable in waiting till this level of this level is broken, especially on a pair like this where it has such a high ATR. And you have to be really careful on where you enter the market. So I would look for a actual, and like I said, if you trade this level, if you want to trade this as a pullback trader, and that's perfectly fine. But me personally, I would like this level of structure broken first. Like I said, it was a level that we know has been traded, that has been tested multiple times in the past. So I would like this level to get broken, then look to get involved, and then look and then if we do break this level of structure, okay, where are we likely to go? Where's an area in the market? And you can see that our last outside level of structure is down here. That's not to say that price is going to, you know, if price does break this level, we go straight there. You know, that's that would be ambitious. Well, for all we know, price comes down and literally goes straight to that level. But the way we could trade it is if the price does break that level, we can kind of look to catch it on the ebbs and flows on the way down. Or if you're if you're just a trader where you're like one in one out and you're looking to, if you're more aggressive with targets, you can look to get a part of this. If you do break that break out from this level, and then place your stops above here and have your targets at the lows. It really determines it depends on the type of trader you are. But for me personally, this right here, like I said, this is a good setup. 
a more quality, a higher quality setup would be waiting for this level to get broken right here and then catching the retest. Yes, that means you are going to miss out on some possible profit right there. That's, you know, that's that's the part of trading. You you have to determine what's a quality setup for you and what is a good setup and what you want to get involved in. You're not going to catch every move in the market. But I would feel more comfortable waiting for that. So, going down to the 60, let me erase this so it's a little easier to see when we get down to the 60. So, when we go down to the 60, let's see what we have. We actually do have some pattern setting up. If you look at this, we have a, like I said, we have a small, we have a little minor trend right here. And like I said, we broke this level of structure right here. We actually don't even have a confirmed trend yet, um, a, a confirmed bearish trend yet, because we just broke this level of structure. We're coming back. We wouldn't actually have a confirmed bearish trend, well, per my rules and then per the way I trade, until we actually break this level of structure right here. So, you know, I wouldn't take this as a trend trade anyways, until we break this level of structure down here. But... We do have a few things setting up in regards to if you're a pattern trader. Um, we have a we have a Gartley setting up to the upside and the downside. So firstly, let's start with the bullish Gartley. We have an X to A right here. We see we at least hit a 618 retracement. Well, we want to make sure we at least hit a 618 retracement on the C leg, which we clearly do right there. And then we go from A to B, a 127 extension. And that's down here at 180.81s. And as you can see, it's a pretty deep guardly, so we get we can get a good risk reward on this pair, especially with the type of ATR it has. So that's a pretty good setup for me. And we also have another guardly. I guess this would be determined on your eyes, and if you determine this to be an X to A leg, for my eyes, I do. Um, it wouldn't be for everyone. So you know, like I said, you can only trade your trade your plan, trade your rules. But like I said, we did break structure right here. So this is an X to A leg for me. So we have an X to A leg right here. Boom. We at least hit a 618A. And you can see it's a pretty deep Gartley as well because the further we go hit it past that 618A without touching the 786, that'll determine where our A to B leg ends and that'll determine our entry point. So the further we get, I mean, I guess the furthest we get from the 120, uh, from the 618, but not touching the 786, the the better the risk reward is going to be on this trade. So we at least hit a 618 here. We know we hit a 618 here. Then we do a 127 extension from A to B. And that is up here. So our pattern will look something like this. X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion up here. So you can see on this pair, on, on this pair in particular, we can kind of trade it both ways depending on where the market goes. That, like I said, this is our level of structure up here. You can see this is clearly a level of structure right here as well. This is where price traded before we broke that level of structure to the downside. And this would be our level of structure to the downside. Like I said, me personally, I like mapping these out because it gives me a clear visualization of what where we're at in the market. Um, yeah, like I said, I me per, I would if I was to take this as a trend continuation trade, I would feel more comfortable in breaking this level of structure down here and then playing it for a retest. Like I said, for me that's a higher quality setup compared to getting a part of some trend continuation trade right now to the downside because we did break structure on that higher time frame. And yeah, so that is how I determine what is a quality trade between a better quality or how I determine the quality between trades. Um, the next pair I have on my radar is the pound yen. All right, so starting off here on the pound yen, um, I want, like I said, do top-down analysis. I wanted to give an update from this past weekend's tr uh, video where I went over a trade I was in. If you want to check out the analysis, you can look in the top left-hand corner. There should be a link up there if you guys want to see what I was in on this trade, um, or like you know the analysis on that on this trade in particular. You can see here on the daily, we recently broke this level of structure right here, looking left. So now that I know we broke this level of structure, where do I think price is going to go? So looking at price we can we can see that we have a clear level of our next level of structure would be up here at about 145 is this level so if i'm looking for price to go up to this point what do i determine what, what do i think is going to happen in the market i can clearly i know i don't want to get short you know i don't want to take counter trend trades i want to look to get long and get involved in some trend continuation trades so when we come down here and we look at the 240 you can see here we've cut we've clearly been on a nice uptrend um, we recently broke this level of structure right here, looking left. 
we came up, we tested, broke it, and we're currently moving higher. We're coming back to retest it as well. So when we come down to the hourly, um, I'll show you the setup that I was in this past weekend and update on that trade. I actually got involved on this retest right here. There was a double bottom on the 15 minute chart, which I got involved. Targets were up here at the highs, which we hit um, early this week. So that was a great trade for me. Um, and now you can see that we broke, broke this level of structure price came down, consolidated a little bit, and, and then we broke higher. So now we're coming back into this little area of structure right here, this little kill zone right here. So looking at this kill zone, we can see price is clearly in this zone. How do we determine whether we want to get involved in a trade or not, or you know get involved on a trend continuation trade? It really depends on how you trade as a trader. For me, I need at least a one-to-one -one on my trend continuation trades. Um, so how I determine if I how I determine that I basically map out the highs, you know, I, I determine I want to get off at, I want to get out at the highs, the highest close, which is up here at 142.62s or wherever you want to get out the highs. Um, then I map out where my lows are at. So this is my low and I go in ATR below the lows. So my lows are 141.33s. So I go in ATR below that. It's 141. 16s sorry i'm not great at math 18s 16s yeah 16s uh oops, sorry like i said i'm not I, yeah, I usually use a calculator um 16s and i actually would have it at 14s or 13s because i don't like having it at a six or a um for my stops um so what i determine what do i do now okay so i know my stop has to be here i know my targets have to be here and i need at least a one-to-one -one. so even though this is my kill zone I come, I take a Fibonacci, um, a fib, I take a Fib um, retracement tool. I go from where my targets are going to be to my stop, and then I look at the 50% retracement. So I go down to the 50% retracement, and I map that from that 50% to my to my um, outside return because I know if price breaks below this level, I'm not looking to get long anymore on a trend continuation setup. So this is my kill zone right here. It does narrow it down. Um, but it ensures that I at least get a one-to-one -one setup on this trade. Um, but if you do notice, if we do get a little lower, what does this start to look like to you? If price does break a little lower, that means that the trend is not as strong anymore. Anytime you get a deeper pullback um, on a trend, on a particular trend, it means that it, I'm not saying the trend is going to reverse, but it shows you sign that the trend is becoming a little bit weaker. When we get weaker extensions and more deeper pullbacks, that shows you a weakening of a trend. But if we do happen to pull back a little deeper, you know, for me, if we get down to this level down here and I get my buy signal, then I'm looking to take targets right here. Because if you look a little closer, what does this look like to you? For me, I see a shoulder. If we, like I said, if we do happen to get pulled a little deeper into this level, a shoulder, a head, and then another shoulder right there. So if we do manage to pull a little deeper, I'm not looking for a full train continuation setup. You, if you're a little more aggressive, you can look for half and half, or you can look for the highs, you know, however you trade your plan says. Uh, me personally, I'm a little bit less aggressive on this. Um, especially with the type of trade it is and how head and shoulders plays out on the pound yen, how I've noticed in my testing. So I'm looking for more of a pullback into this level, looking for price to get some type of double bottom, higher, higher, higher close, and then I'm looking to get out right there. And if even if, like I said, if that does happen, you still get a really good risk reward. Because if you see right here, so say price does come down into this level, we get a higher, higher, higher close right here. So this is our stops. This would be our highs. It would be a, still a little more than a one to one. So it really determines on how you want to trade it. And if you, like I said, if you want to shoot for a a retest of the highs, that gives you an even better one to one. So it, like I said, it really just determines on how aggressive you are on this trade and how you trade um, these pullbacks. Because like I said, that's still like I said, better than a one to one. And if you shoot for the highs, you can see we definitely have better than a roughly about a two to one. Oh, sorry, that was supposed to be green. Let's do that again, right there. So you can see we have a about a one, two, a little less than a three to one. So it really determines on the type of trade you are and how you test it and how you trade it. Me personally, I'm looking to get out of the market right here on a retest of that left shoulder. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at on this pair or if we you know, we just, 
naturally pull into this area, then I'm looking for a higher, high, higher close. This is only if we pull deeper into this zone. Sorry, I, just, I need to, that for, like I said, for my particular trade setup, if we pull to the lows down here, then I'm looking to get out right here at the left shoulder. If we reverse anywhere, get a higher, higher, higher close before that point, then I'm looking for a retest of the highs. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, the next pair I have is the Aussie CAD. All right, so let's start here on the Aussie CAD. You can see here on the daily, recently we've basically been in this, we broke above this level of structure right here with that strong bullish day, but we have since been channeling. Um, when we go down to the two, or sorry, the four hour, you get a kind of clear view of what I'm talking about. Price basically, we traded down, we broke above this level of structure right here, looking left on that strong day, and then we came to this level where we had two levels of structure, and then we broke above this level right here. So when we make that determination, we broke above this level of structure, we're thinking price is gonna go higher. Where's our next level of structure? That would be up here. Our next level of structure is up here at 96, 97. So about 97 even, even handle. It's a nice even handle number up there. So if I'm determining price is gonna go up there, how would I look to get involved? Recently, you can see that price has basically been flagging. Get something like this sorry it's a little sloppy um it looks a little something like that there we go that's good enough you get the idea price has basically been consolidating so we're kind of waiting for price to either break up or break down at this point um if we do happen to break to the upside i personally would need a break above this level to get involved and not just a break of this flag i would need a break above the highs right here and then I would look for some type of pullback higher. Um, that could happen, you know, any day now, uh, depending on where this where price breaks out from. But that would be how I would play this if it was if I was playing it to a, for a break to the upside. I would need a break above that level, some type of pullback into the zone, an area where I can put stops and get a good risk reward on this trade, and then play it for a retest of the highs. Um, that might be kind of limited um, because the type of targets you may get on that um because for well i guess it depends on the type of trade you are me i can't trade i wouldn't take targets past this point so my targets would have to be here so this is my this is my area of profit right here a retest of the highs so if that's my area of profit i went and we break this level right here i would need some type like i said i would need some type of pull breakout a kind of a deeper pullback into this zone so that gives me a decent place to place my stops ATR base stops below the lows and then that like I said if that happens then that would give me a pretty decent risk reward if I was to play for a retest of the high say if I got in somewhere at this point and this is my and I'm looking for a retest of the highs up here at 97s something like that right here then that would give me a little less than a two to one, about one and a half to one, which is not bad um, for a trend continuation setup. Um, and if you are looking for extended targets, you can get a way better uh, risk reward than that. But me personally, this is the furthest I would look to take targets. Um, so that's what I'm looking at for this pair. And if we do break to the downside, I mean, like I said, it doesn't mean just because we're flagging, we're consolidating, doesn't mean we have to break to the upside. I'm predicting a breakout to the upside because we broke this level of structure but that does not mean it's going to happen so if we do happen to break to the downside how would i look to get involved say we can, price came down get this is on the 60 minute chart get a kind of clear view right here we're basically channeling like this say if price did come broke down then i would just look for a retest here look for a retest and then play it for a move lower and then the level I would look to get tested if we broke level is this level of structure right here down at 95 40s. There's not a lot of space. I mean, there's a pretty decent about 60 pips. So um, on the on the hourly time frame. Um, so, you know, it could be a day trading time frame for you or something like that. But that would be the next area I would be looking for any type of targets. If you're a little bit more conservative, you can look for up here around 95 60s. Um, that would be a safer location uh, for, for targets. But it, like I said, it depends on the type of trader you are. Um, the last pair I have is the dollar yen. All right, so starting off here on the dollar yen, doing our top-down analysis. You can see here on the daily, we've basically really been trading in this tight consolidation zone right here, right here, between here 
in between here. Basically, price has been consolidating and even in a tighter zone between here, between 107s and 105.25. So we get a clear view when we go down to the four hour. When we go down to the four hour, you can see here, this is that zone I was talking about between 107s and 105.25s or a little bit shorter than that. So like I said, what I like to do, map out my areas of structure. I know this is an area of structure up here and I know this is a level of structure down here. And until we can break one of these places, I know that we're in consolidation. And uh, like I said, we have another level of structure down here. I just want to map out just because I am weird and I like to map these things out. Um, so we're in a note, we know we're in this level of, in this consolidation. So what am I looking for in consolidation? Am I looking for trend continuation setups? I know that when I'm in consolidation, I'm looking for patterns and I'm looking for counter trend setups at structure. So when we come down to the hourly, we have a bat pattern setting up for my eye. We have an X to A that looks something like this. X to A, we hit a 50% retracement here. We at least hit a 382 retracement on this B leg. And as a matter of fact, I'll show you just because it's good to map these things out. You can see right here, we hit, a, hit that 50%. So we at least hit a 382. And then we our uh, D completion is a 886 of our X to A. So our pattern looks something like this, X to A, A to B, B to C, and a C to D completion here up at the 886. So if I'm looking to get involved in this bat pattern, if price does happen to break higher. Also, I'm not a day trader, but if I was, um, well, I guess that's not necessarily considered just a day trade. This is something that's actually on the radar as well. But as you can see here, price has since after price came down tesla's level structure lower we've come up here and price has basically came down retested came down retested i'm looking for some type of either retracement right here and then a breakout and above if we get that breakout and above i'm looking for some type of retest and then playing it for a move higher um, if you're a little more conservative, you can look for a move up to here around 106.50s. It's a good about 40 to 50 pips of profit in here if you can get involved in this pullback. Or if you're if you're more of a breakout trader, you can get involved in the breakout up here uh, with your stops below this level right here. Sorry, I'm muck up this chart. <laughs> um, you can get your stops somewhere if you like. I said, if you're more of a breakout trader, you can get your stops below here, targets up here. And then that risk reward, if you, like I said, if you get involved in that breakout, looks something like this. Like that. Let me make sure it's because I want to make sure it's a nice ATR stop. Let's see, ATRs are 11. So 11 between 84 is 40, 70, 84, 74s. Oh, so right about there, yeah. So right about 74s right there. So this is what the risk reward would look like if you were a breakout trader and if you were looking at, if like I said, if you were more conservative with your targets, it would look something like this. And if you were more aggressive with your targets and you were looking for price to test the highs, you can see that that gives you a way better risk reward. It really just determines on how you want to take your targets. That's, a, that's at least a two to one down here. Like I said, if you're more conservative, looking to get out of this level of structure right here, looking left, which you can see was tested here here and here that was about a one-to-one -one, a little more than a one-to-one -one, so that would be a decent level as well um ways to get involved like i said you can get involved in a breakout you can get involved on some type of breakout and then pull back something like this something like come back pull back into this level and then look to trade it higher to this point um and i say it really just determines on the type of trader you are this is something I might be looking at in the morning, depending on how price plays out overnight. And if I miss this move or not, um, you know, that's what happens when you trade on the West Coast. You you miss the whole London Open. <laughs> um, but maybe something that's there. Who knows? But the bat pattern is something I definitely have on my radar um, for tomorrow morning. It may feel overnight. And the one advantage of trading the bat pattern and trading advanced patterns is I already have my orders on there for that. Uh, if I do happen to get into this trade, that will be happen to be adjusted. Um, it wouldn't have to be adjusted too much, actually, because if, if I get into this, my, my targets would be in this area. And then the bat pattern completion was up here at a little higher at 74. So, yeah, it wouldn't the two trades wouldn't conflict with each other. So, yeah, that's what I have on the radar for the dollar yen. 
I hope this uh, this midweek review video was helpful to someone out there. To like I said, not only showing you guys what I have on the radar, but how I go about you know go doing my analysis, how I pick out better opportunities from good opportunities, or how just the quality of the trade and you know how I incorporate structure and just looking at different things that I have on the radar. Um, if you guys did find value out of the video, you know, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below and that little notification. That way you guys don't miss any of my future videos. And actually, I have a question for you guys. Um, the question is, how do you go about picking your quality trades? Like, do you look, you know, do you look at structure? Do you wait for, like, do you, do you look at certain levels in the market to get tested or broken before you look to get involved? I, I really would be interested to see how other traders, traders who've been trading for a while or even new to trading, what do you guys determine to kind of help you pick out those quality setups? Also, in the future, I'm thinking about doing these midweek videos as kind of like a live stream. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys would be interested in that. Let me know in the comment section below if that's something you guys would like to see. Because something I'm interested in doing, you know, for at least a couple hours, just going over, you know, what I have on the radar live in the mornings, which would be about 5.30 my time. So... 5 or 4.30 my time on the West Coast. I don't know what time that would be for you guys, so we can determine that at a later time. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, until next time, thanks for taking time to watch this midweek review video. Take care, have a good rest of your trading weeks, and I will see you on the weekend review. Bye.